Welcome back. The backbone for our edit form is the model, and we need to create one for the item we're going to create or edit. Under the models folder, create a new file called message.php. Just like for the list view, the subcontroller, model, and as we'll see later, the view all have the same file and or folder names. Now look for the snippet called backend item model and bring it up. Once again, fill in the package, subpackage, and component name as we've done many times before. Next, we type in message in proper case for the name of the model. This is used in the class name, which follows the same naming rules as the list model. The next variable is the name of the database table we use to store the data. We don't include the database prefix, so just type in hello underscore messages. When you've done that, insert the snippet. You can see we have a class named hello model message, and it is extended from the jmodel admin class. The jmodel admin class has a lot of built-in support for the edit form, but we need to include a few methods by hand in this version of the framework. The first method is the getForm method, and this gets an instance of the form object based on the new jform class added in Joomla 1.6. You might override this method if you want to manipulate the form in any way. For example, an article edit form will turn various fields on and off depending on the access controls available to the user. This is an abstract method, so we must include it, but it's so standard that future versions of Joomla may include it in JModel Admin. The next method is an override for JModel Admin's getItem method. You can see we're invoking the parent class's getItem method, and if that returns a result, we want to manipulate the data. What we're doing here is converting some of the date fields from universal time into the user's local time. To do this, we're going to need the user's time zone offset. In Joomla 1.5, the time zone offset was a number representing the hours either side of universal time. In Joomla 1.6, the time zone offset is stored as a string representing the time zone region you're in. This is stored in Joomla's configuration file. To access this value, we can use the getCFG method in the application object, which we get by a call to jfactory's getApplication method. We then pass that value into the constructor for PHP's dateTimeZone object and we store that to use soon. The first date field we want to adjust is the created time field. This won't have a value if this is a new item, so we check if the inner value of the date is non-zero. Just as an aside, this is probably not the safest way to check if the date has been set because not all databases use a set of zeros for no date. It's probably better to check against the value that we call null date in the database. I'll give you an update in the notes when Joomla starts supporting other database engines where the shortcut won't work. If the field has a value, we're going to load that into a class called jDate, which is derived from PHP's DateTime class. Next, we use the jDate setTimeZone method to set the time zone we previously assigned in the $tz variable. This is going to convert the date from universal time that came from the database into the user's local time. Lastly, we overwrite the created time field with the adjusted date using jDate's toMySQL method and passing an argument of true, which means that we want the value in local time. Again, this snippet will need to be slightly modified when Joomla starts to natively support other database engines. If the created time field does not have a value, we just set it to null. We do the same for the modified time field and then pass the result back to the calling method. The next method is get reorder conditions and this is only required if we're supporting categories, which we eventually want to do. All this does is ensure that items are reordered within their categories. If you don't support categories in your components, you can safely remove this method. The next method is get table, and this is just a proxy to get the correct table for this model to use. Its job is mainly to set the correct prefix for the table class. The next method is load form data, and this does a few interesting things to load the data that the form is supposed to use. First, it has a look in the application state for a variable, in our case, named com underscore hello dot edit dot message dot data. Now, if that variable is empty, we load the data for the item from the database. 
So if we look at creating a new form, on the first pass through all the data will be empty, so we get a blank form. If we try to save the data and for some reason it does not validate, all the data we submitted is stored in the application state variable. So, when the page redirects back to the edit form, expecting us to fix up the bad value, we can populate the form with the data we previously submitted, rather than just showing a new blank form. Similarly, if we edit an existing record, if we trip a validation rule, the form will be returned with all our changes intact, so we can just fix up the bad value. You can extend this method further and it's worth looking at ComContents article model to see how it uses this method to automatically set the category ID for new articles. Last of all, we have a prepare table method. This is a method that is called just before jmodeladmin saves the data and gives you an opportunity to manipulate any of the submitted data before that happens. With the data we've got in this component, the first thing we do is make sure the alias field is URL safe. If the alias field hasn't been provided, we'll take the title of the message. Next, there's a check for a new item, and all we're doing here is setting the ordering past the last item in the category. Finally, there's a large block of code that makes sure the meta key field is formatted and sanitized. Ideally, this could be done as a filter associated with the JForm library, but the code was a late inclusion in Joomla 1.6. You always need something to include to improve in the next version. Well, that's it for the model class. There's a lot of other methods that you can override, but I've shown you the basics just to get us started. In the next lesson, we'll switch gears and look at the XML file that defines our JForm-based edit form. See you back soon.